All right, in this video, I would like to talk about multiplying radicals. Uh, to begin, let's refresh our memory on when we were simplifying radicals. Uh, in this little note, we had the nth root of a times b. We could rewrite that as the nth root of a times the nth root of b, and that's what allowed us to quote unquote simplify radicals in a previous video. Well, here we're just going to be kind of going backwards, right? Because this right hand side means the nth root of a times the nth root of b. And that can be written as, over here on the left side, the nth root of a times b. Right? So if the radicals are the same, in other words, the indices are the same, then we can multiply the radicands uh, together. Right? The a and b are the, called the radicands. We can multiply those together, and they're all under one um, radical sign. Right? For example, say we have square root of 3 times the square root of 8. Right. Well, they're both square roots, so the indices are both 2, right, for both of them there. So we can rewrite that as the square root of 3 times 8, uh, which is just the square root of 24. Right? Everybody agree with that? Square root of 24. And then we say, all right, can we simplify the square root of 24? Well, sure, the square root of 24 can be simplified down to the square root of 4 times the square root of 6, which goes to 2 radical 6. And so that's what the square root of 3 times the square root of 8 simplifies down to. Right? Let's try another one. Suppose we had this one, the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 6. Right? Well, that would be the, since they're both cube roots, we can do 9 times 6, so that would be the cube root of 54. Right? And we say, well, is the cube root of 54 simplified, or can we simplify it further? Well, what's the largest perfect um, cube that divides evenly into 54? Well, that's 27. So we can rewrite that as the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. And that all goes to 3 times the cube root of 2. And so that's what the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 6 multiplies up to do. So it's, the new thing here is realizing that the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 6 can be rewritten as the cube root of 54. And then from this stage, the cube root of 54, then we're thinking back to um, the previous videos where we talked about simplifying uh, radical expressions down to 3 times the cube root of 2. Alright, are you with me? Alright, well, let's expand this out just a little bit more. Alright, now we want to simplify. Those are going to be the directions. All right, well, we notice here we have the square root of 2 times 3 plus the square root of 7. So the question is, uh, what property are we going to use in order to multiply the square root of 2 times 3 plus the square root of 7? Right, it looks just like the, we're going to use the distributive property. Right? This doesn't look really any different. The square root of 2 is just some number, and we're just going to distribute that through the parentheses. So we have to be careful, though, right? The square root of 2 times 3, we can only write as 3 times the square root of 2. Right? That's not the square root of 6. Right? That's just the square root of 2 times 3, which we write as 3 times the square root of 2. Then we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 7. All right, now those radicals are the same, so we can say it's the square root of, and then 2 times 7 is 14. So when you distribute the square root of 2 through, you get 3 times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 14. Is 3 times the square root of 2 simplified? Yes. Is the square root of 14 simplified? Yes. So this is as far as we can go. So I want to point out that um, we can use the distributive property. In fact, all those little properties that we had before for multiplying things out, we, we, they still apply here. We're just using radicals, that's all. all right, so let's try another one. All right, again, we're going to use the distributive property. All right, so the square root of 5 times the square root of 15 uh, multiplies out to be the square root of 75. Minus the square root of 5 times the square root of 10 would be the square root of 50. All right, so now that we have the square root of 75 minus the square root of 50. We ask ourselves if the square root of 75 is simplified and if the square root of 50 is simplified. And we note, oh, look, the square root of 75, we could actually simplify that more because 25 divides into 75. So we could rewrite this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And over here, we could do the same thing. Square root of 25, only it's going to be times the square root of 2 because 25 times 2 gives you 50. All right, then the square root of 25 is 5 times the square root of 3 minus 5 times the square root of 2. Right? And these are not like radicals. We cannot add them up any farther. That's just as far as we can simplify it. With me? 
right? So the distributed property, you just have you know one thing out in front times multiple things, then we used to use the distributed property. All right, so now what about this one? Uh, what does it look like we might do here? Right? Yeah, we're just gonna we're just multiplying a binomial times a binomial, so we're just gonna use the distributed property twice, like we did when we multiplied x plus two times x plus seven. Right? It's the same same idea. So we're gonna take the square root of two and multiply that through over here. So the square just like this: the square root of two times the square root of five, and the square root of two times the square root of seven. So square root of two times the square root of five is the square root of ten. Square root of two times the square root of seven is the square root of fourteen. And now if you do the same thing with the square root of 3. Square root of 3 times the square root of 5, and the square root of 3 times the square root of 7. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 5 is going to be the square root of 15. And the square root of 3 times the square root of 7 is going to be the square root of 21. And then we look at each one of those radicals, and we say, will they simplify farther? The square root of 10 does not. The square root of 14 does not. The square root of 15 does not. The square root of 21 does not. So this is what we get when we multiply out the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 times the square root of 5 plus the square root of 7. Alright, let's try one more. Alright, so we've got 2 minus the square root of x times 3 plus the square root of x. Alright, so again, uh, just use the distributed property twice, so 2 times 3 gives us 6. 2 times the square root of x gives us plus 2 times the square root of x, because you can't multiply the 2 underneath the radical, right? And then we have negative the square root of x times 3, so that's going to go to minus 3 square root of x. And then negative the square root of x times the square root of x, well, that's going to be minus the square root of x squared. Because the square root of x times the square root of x is x squared. But we notice, hey, the uh, square root of x squared will simplify down, and we notice that, oh look, 2 radical x and negative 3 radical x, those will simplify up because they're like terms. So we can simplify all of this to 6 minus the square root of x minus x. And that's it. All right, so you kind of with me on the idea? So the good news is, is we're using the same concepts that we had before when multiplying polynomials together. The only new thing we're doing is um, in order to multiply radicals together, uh, they have to have the same index. Square root times a square root, uh, cube root times a cube root, we, if, if they've got the same index, then we can multiply the radicands together. If they do not have the same index, say they had like the square root of 2 times the cube root of 7, then um, we just leave it as the square root of 2 times the cube root of 7. Right? There are other ways to rewrite it, yes, but we would probably just leave it like that. Okay. All right, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.